booth next to her, and the art from the pro stock car needs to go there. They need to be side by side. Yeah. And then somebody needs to put a Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah, plan. We are here back on the stage, PRI 2021. Mr. Lake Speed Jr., how are you, sir? I'm very well, Brian. You're a guy that's been involved in this industry in multiple facets over the years. Your, your current concentration, total seal piston rings, you've been involved in lubrication, driven racing oil, and, yep. and uh, working with Matt Hartford. I mean, that's a, that's, a whole enough, that's a whole interview topic in and unto itself. It could be, right? Just the backstory to how to even be sitting here right now by itself is a fun story. You know, but that's the cool thing about uh, Matt and Keith, Kevin, all the guys at Total Seal. You know, they were customers before I ever came to work there. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, really, uh, Total Seal was the, Joe Gibbs Racing was the first yeah. NASCAR team to begin using the Total Seal diamond finish rings. Amazing. I had no idea. Yeah, so we were the very first one to jump off the cliff and try something crazy and different. Yeah. Um, you know, so the development of the Gibbs oil and the development of Total Seal rings hand actually hand. happened hand, hand in hand. Yeah. And I was there during part of that. So me being a tribologist, which is study of friction, wear, and lubrication, the piston ring is the coolest tribological device in an engine because it sees all three stages of lubrication every single cycle nothing else in the engine does that nothing else sees that yeah no. bearings and everything else totally different totally different program because no, you got full film which is what the bearings yeah. live in you've got boundary condition which is the valve train lives in so that's the rest of me and billy godball became best buddies this <laughs> is through that right but then you got this mix film which is a transition between the two the piston ring does all three of those every single stroke every single time i go yeah, yeah actually twice yeah. top and bottom that is uh, that is that is actually fascinating, and it's a neat connection between I mean between all of your kind of background. Oh, it is. It was, yeah. it was very easy for me to move from oil to piston rings because ring seal we always call it soup. Ring seal soup. You know, um, we love Indianapolis. Love to go over to St. Elmo's and have dinner. Had dinner there last night with Gary Stinnett and Pat Musi. Oh boy, a bunch of guys. So. They're they're trying to make me a drag racing guy, Brian. <laughs> I swear they are. They're uh, conspiring to. Those make, guys will turn you if you spend you know, enough time uh, with they, them. They're getting close. Um, but you can have your dinner, and you can order the steak, and you can have your your potato and the broccoli and all that. And you know, if you don't like one of them, you don't, you don't have to eat it. It's okay. You can still have a good dinner. If you have soup, either you like it or you don't. Right. And ring seal is soup. It's not steak. And Makes, that's a great analogy. Yeah, it it's the home, it's the ring, it's the piston, it's the oil. They all have to work together, and that's the real fun part of being at Total Seal is educating people. Well, I was going to say that you know you guys have made a very concerted and very successful effort over the last couple of years with with social media. Yeah. At the racetrack, you guys yep. are hosting events at the racetrack. I mean, you, you you're crushing it on educating just gearheads educating your customers i mean at the end of the day a more knowledgeable customer is a better customer right there if you're making an informed choice or you're taking the time to learn and then make an informed choice it makes everybody happier in the end with the right product and the right home like you said the right performance the most expensive part in the engine is the wrong one <laughs> that is a that is a very true statement yeah. uh, i mean it's just the facts if, yeah. if, if you're educated enough to know what's the right part to buy that's the least expensive part. Yeah. And so that's really what we're trying to do is we have the, the benefit. You know, and, and Matt's done a fantastic job over this for several years now of pulling back that veil of mystery yeah. on Pro Stock and letting people see. Oh, it's been fantastic. And, you know, me coming from the NASCAR background, we're letting people know that the stuff that was super secret in 2008, 2009, 2010 you can buy from anybody in this building today. Right. right. You don't have to buy 1970s, 1980s technology. You can get the pro stuff today. today. And in the end, it saves you money yeah. because it lasts three or four or five times longer than the stuff that was high tech for the, yeah. the 80s, early 90s. So it's a no-brainer. So we, we have a lot of fun sharing the stuff that we've been able, been privileged enough yeah. to learn and share it with, it with everybody and the response I mean, I mean really the last you know day and a half at the show 
the overwhelming comment is thank you yeah absolutely thank you for what you're doing with the podcast thank you for what you're doing with the youtube videos the engine performance expo they're loving this stuff because it's real tech for oh, real guys oh absolutely yeah and it's and it's done at a level that is if you're a, if you're a super high level engine builder you're, you're going to be informed watching this you probably know some of the stuff but you're going to learn if you're someone who's younger that is interested in engines and is trying to learn a little bit more and incrementally grow your knowledge base it's not going to fly over your head right you know, it's delivered in a great way that it really does capture a very wide audience it does and a guy th- this morning probably got 20 minutes ago he's a racer i don't build engines I'm a racer, so buy, I buy engines, and so I'm better educated now about how to talk to my engine builder and what that I want, and I understand what he's asking yep. of me now more. So again, the more you know, the better you can do. That's a fact. And we were, I mean, myself, was very fortunate to grow up around racing my literally my entire yes. life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go you know, race racetracks. The smell of methanol is, is is home for me. Whatever that is, is that's that's home. That's home. Um, but you know, being at Gibbs during that time, which is almost the halcyon era of engine development, yeah. where literally every cup shop had a deal with a Formula One team to do development work. Wild. And it was FedEx and Home Depot and M and M's. They never cared how many how much we spent on oil. No, or engine parts. They care about winning races and winning championships. Right. So we've been able to take that level of funding and sponsorship and then pass along to everybody else the lessons learned. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's really the way it should work, right? Isn't that ideally that is how the whole thing is supposed to work? Right. We, we don't, we're not keeping it to ourselves as secrets. I mean, literally what we're talking about on a daily basis uh, are things that were secret. 10 years ago, yeah. that no one would whisper it, that you would be blackballed in the yeah, industry if you, if you, you, if know, you said this kind of stuff. You're the magician giving away how you do the tricks, right, right, back in the day. That was a very short-sighted viewpoint. And, and, it, and it was weird. You know, i, I got to thank Chris Douglas uh, from CompCam, the Metal Block Group. He's the one that actually encouraged me to actually start live streaming when we were doing testing. So don't keep a secret. What's the secret here? You're like, yeah, the people that already know, know. Right. So we're not fooling anybody. No. And the people that don't know are... are don't know. Are, they don't know. And and when they witness this test, when they see the, the rigors of the test, they see the depth of the test, it's like, oh, wait a second. This isn't just some magic in a bottle. This is this is an actually this engineered, is developed product. Yeah. yeah, real science. Yeah. And so we started doing that, and it was weird at first. I to, bet, because they're like, uh, yeah. I, I'm, am I really telling you this stuff? Yeah. Is this okay? And you start doing it, and people get onto it, and they're like, this is really great. And then it just became easy. Like, ah, we're telling everybody all the secrets anymore. <laughs> it's like, be careful. If you tell me something, I'm probably going to tell everybody else. <laughs> so, man, if I'm, a, if I'm to swing by the Total Seal Piston Rings booth today, what am I seeing featured? What are you guys, what are you guys most excited about for 22? So we're actually doing episodes of our Hidden Horsepower bro- uh, podcast. Right in the booth. From the booth. Pitching. So we're actually recording them. I got you know, Joe Costello. Nice. He's sitting over there. He's interviewing guys. When I left, he was interviewing Brad Glagman. Cool. From QMP. Yep. We wish Brad's a great guy. Him and Keith are jawing about surface finish on a cylinder bore technology with a guy named Mark Malberg, who is an ex Cummins guy, who is okay. who is the Billy Godbold of surface finish. Cummins knows how to build some engines. They have some they've, pretty they've good done, experience. They've done all right. They've yeah. done, done okay. So so we've we've got that going on. We also have a brand new product. Uh, which I'm really excited about. It's called the Endurance Oil Ring. You know, so a three-piece oil ring is two scraper rails and an expander. The expander is a spring. And if you think about the, what's going on with the thinner ring technology, which is better. Yes. It's better in every possible way. But what happens a lot of times is the most available thin ring stuff is based on OEM applications okay. because the OEMs are using it for all the reasons that we use it for in racing. Fuel economy, you know, less wear, longer mileage, all that. But you got to remember, though, most OEMs, they're using 020, maybe 5W30. Yeah, very lightweight that. oil. Right. Yeah. So the oil ring tension is designed for those lightweight oils. Okay. And they're mostly designed for 
naturally aspirated engines. Maybe some low levels of boost. But our, our guys put zeros after that bell low boost, right? <laughs> so when you do that, you're going to put more fuel into the engine with more boost, right? Mm-hmm. More boost means more air, means more fuel. That means there's more fuel washing the oil off the cylinder wall, which means you need more valley, right? But also people tend to, with more boost, more load, you need higher viscosity oil. Most racers aren't running 0 20 no. on a blown motor. They're running 2050 or a straight 50 or something like that. You need a higher oil ring tension for that. Makes sense. So what we've come out with is a nitrided oil ring. So we could take a stock type oil ring tension, say two millimeter for four O thirty bores, about nine pounds of oil ring tension. Okay. Factory. It's a spring. Once you run it for a little bit, it's going to lose some tension. It's probably around seven. Seven is borderline for oil control. Acceptable. Yes. You put 2050 in there, there's probably not going to, which we all know a lot of engines today have oil consumption problems yes, they do. when they get older. Yes, they do. What's actually di- dying isn't the cylinder. It's, it's not the it's rings. Still- it's the expander. Yeah. It's losing tension. Amazing. So by gas nitriding the expander, two things happen. One, it instantly gains four pounds of tension. Just like that. Your margin of error now is there. Yeah. So I have a 13 or 14 pound oil ring versus a nine pound oil ring. Which nine is going to become seven, like you said, or worse than that, versus your 13 is going to become a nice 10, 11, somewhere in there. It might lose one. Yeah. Because the yeah. nitriding process makes the material stronger. Okay. So it's less than the fatigue resistance, which, hey, this is the same stuff the valve spring guys have been doing for a long time. We're just slowly catching on. Incorporating and saying, it into your yeah, own. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's the reason why a set of pack springs cost more than a set of just off the shelf yeah. stock replacement springs. Yeah. They're both steel springs. There's work and engineering in those pack springs. Right. Yeah. And part of that is the, the heat treat and all that. So that's what we're doing. And the cool thing is it doesn't change the the spacing of the ring, right? So you don't take up all your back clearance or create any kind of sizing issue. It's the exact same size spring. It's just a better spring. It's a better spring. So that's yeah. what we re- released here at PRI is the endurance expander. Very cool. And very, it's already cool. had a lot of success in pro mod racing no that's fantastic because if there's anybody brutal on parts is pro mod yes let's throw all the boost at it let's throw nitrous at it let's throw turbos at it. whatever Everything. we get to do yeah, yeah all we'll take it all. yeah lake speed jr with total sealed piston rings a fascinating guy to talk to on engine technology on all fronts if you're coming to the pri show make sure you get by the total seal booth if you're not make sure you follow total seal on youtube follow their hidden horsepower podcast a lot of great engine building technology being shared on a weekly basis by this company and it is a fascinating thing for any gear had to learn about lake speed jr thank you man thank you brian appreciate it sir appreciate it we'll be back with more here on the sema stage and remember coming up at 1 30 eastern ron caps melts the internet we'll be here <laughs> see you